<laughs> great way to start off the video. Hello, hello! I'm just going to be casually playing around with brushes today and I'm going to be playing with some makeup that I've gotten in recently. I have no idea how to use this. So I have a whole series of eye brushes that are kind of equivalent in how they're shaped and apply and I'm going to be playing with the eyeshadows primarily. Um, a little bit of a background. A good friend gave me a bunch of indie eyeshadows, some duochrome, some multichrome, so I'm really excited to play with them. And I thought I'd do so on camera because why not? And then also have two pointed brushes here, one made of dyed goat, one made of Kalinsky, to play with some of the iridescent highlighters, and then just two regular blush brushes. Oops. The camera's a bit top heavy. And then um going to be just applying stuff and probably wiping off as I go, maybe swatching on the back of my hand, but I'm just going to play around and see what happens. So the glasses are there so I can read the packaging in case I need to see what I'm looking at later. So I'm just going to apply foundation. I'm going to use the Hourglass. This is the Vanish Stick Foundation brush. It was made specifically for that stick foundation. I'm using a cream foundation, not much of a difference. This one is quite flexible, and I was actually surprised that they made this sort of stick foundation. But it does make sense. If they made a really, really dense brush, it would probably apply with too much coverage. So using this to just spread foundation all over the place. Cut some hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation that's finally starting to go down a bit. And then yes, I am dabbing it directly into the pan because there's like one empty pan that's almost out. So I'm just going directly in there rather than using my usual stick to pick up. Or the spatula to pick up and spread. I don't feel like this is the most effective foundation brush but I've been using it and I didn't want to pull out a clean one just for the purposes of the video, so this is what you're getting. And then because the bristles are so flexible, as you can see, it does apply a quite sheer with quite the natural finish, so if you want more coverage, you're definitely going to have to go back and spot conceal and then use a brush to tap and blend out. Probably do have to adjust the lighting to get it to be not so bright. So you can actually see stuff that's going on. Okay, now that I'm pretty sure I've got every bit of my face covered, I'm not going to do powder because I don't intend to keep the makeup on for long, if I'm being quite honest. I'm probably just going to go... <laughs> Uh, maybe do a walk, some short workout, and then just wash it right off in the shower. So one of the first things I have to play with is a blush from Addiction. It's the Unpolished Gem. This is... what number is this? I think it's F5. But... So here it is. Kind of a marbled pattern. Truly an unboxing video. Let me see how do I get this open. Aha. So we here we go. Kind of a corally color. So I picked out two blush brushes to try this with, and this is probably why I'm not going to keep the makeup on for long. I'm using different brushes on each side. And this is my typical process when I get new makeup. I pick two different brushes and I see how they apply. And the good news is you get to see how two different blush, two different blush brushes apply the same blush. So I have a sort of firm round brush on this side and I have the very standard paddle brush on this side. Both are made of Saikoho Grey Goat Hair. This is the Koyudo I'm not sure what they call it now. I think it's the Yoshiki series. Um, when I bought it, it was called the Cherry Birch Cheek Brush. But I think this is called the Yoshiki now. I'll probably look it up and link the relevant product name later. 
And then this is the Bichotto Short Cheek Brush, uh, forgetting the number code off the top of my head, but it will be linked eventually. So they're both medium brushes. I would call this one a little bit medium large, but they're very good for everyday blush. And this is an everyday blush color. So we're gonna see how this works out. And everything would probably go a little smoother if I had a mirror. So let me find a mirror. I'm sure there's a mirror here somewhere. Okay, mirror found. Can you tell I was not prepared to do this video? I was not prepared. I just found some extra time and I said, let's film the video. Okay, so that might have been a mistake. I went into the blush and I went like this twice and it's already picked up a ton of color. So this would definitely be a blush that's going to be easy to be picked up by gray squirrel or some other sort of delicate hair. So let's do this here. Oh, I just realized I'm applying it on the wrong side. Okay, paddle, br paddle brush on this side and I'll do the round brush on the other side. So the nice thing is, even though I picked up a ton of product, it's pretty controllable and it's layering quite well. And now that I know that, because the round brush is firmer, denser, it's going to pick up more product, I'm not going to go swirling it round vigorously. So there is that. I'm going to take a little bit up here and then just brush the rest of the excess around, giving some color. You could totally use this as a bronzer brush, but it's labeled as a blush brush. So that's this side, this brush. As you can see, big or more small and controlled. Round brush is obviously going to be the same surface application area around the whole thing. So, and probably not gonna use this as the bronzer brush, but I can still take what's left on the bristles and kind of blend all over the face with it. Okay, now that I know this blush can be a little intense, I'm just gonna dab it, pick up a little bit of color and then see how it goes. And I'm just barely touching it to the skin right now to distribute product. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm barely touching it to the skin and I'm just kind of spiraling it outwards. So as I spiral outwards, I use the edge bristles, which don't have much, much product on it, which kind of creates the fade effect. It might just look like I'm mashing it in and that would be the case if I was fully pressing it, but I'm just barely using it on the tip like that of the dome. My face skin just moves because it's very movable. And then I'm using the side of the brush here to kind of blend out the edges. Okay. So right away you can see there's a little bit of a color difference. This is slightly more pink and this has picked up and blended out more so you get more of those sort of corally brown undertone to it. So now I'm just gonna take the brush, even it out everywhere. So if I lean back, you can kind of really see the color difference. In real life, it's not really presenting that much of a difference, but on camera, it truly is showing the difference between the pink tones and the orange tones in here. So the orange so the orange base is what I call the matrix and then the pink is more of the shimmer. So the matrix is like the main base color and then the other stuff mixed in is not being buffed away on the paddle side like it is on the round side. So something to keep in mind, you can change your blush by choosing the brush. Okay. Now I have this palette of all these. I guess what you would call toppers. Um, the most fitting one would be this sort of pink one or this golden one. So I'm going to go with this sort of orangey one and then take a fan brush and top it with the white one. So I'm gonna take the Sonia G Inoshige Pro. This is a dyed Psycho goat brush and I've been waiting for it for a while. And I've really loved it ever since I started using it. Okay, that was a bad idea. I've been using it as a powder brush to kind of 
powder target areas around my face but it can be used as a blush brush as well and I'm going to be kind of using this as a blush topper. Normally I don't apply highlighter this much but I really want to see the effect and for you to be able to see the effect of the different bristles and how they apply product differently. I'm going to just apply this here and then take it up. Just using the tip. Up that way. And then I'm going to be using the Koyudo Kolinsky Radin face brush. This is a face brush, but I use it as a cheek brush because it's cheek brush sized for me. I'm going to be just barely tapping it here because Kolinsky tends to pick up a lot. And then applying it so. And then this is what I love about Kalinsky. You can see a much smoother of an effect with far less blending. Like every time I use this brush, I'm amazed. I'm gonna go back in with the Eno Chica Pro and blend this side out a little bit more. You can see like kind of more texture on this side, but here it just goes on completely smooth and I've only been stroking my face a couple times in comparison. So I'm gonna go back to the Eno Chica and then just kind of use this rolling motion to kind of lift and redistribute a bit. So this is actually a more ergonomic way to do it, okay. It's kind of like using a Q-tip and then using it to roll and flick and blend or erase mascara mistakes. So I'm using this to kind of erase the edge. And there we go. Now the sides are comparable. And then I'm going to be using this Sonia G Fan Pro and using the whitish color to kind of highlight around other areas of the face. Normally I wouldn't go this extreme with this much highlighter, but hey, I'm having fun today. So I'm gonna go down here. Through here, and then I'm just gonna take what's left, kind of widen this area. But otherwise, this is lifting the brows and this is lifting this part up just a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, I totally forgot to explain what the different brushes are for. Well, I kind of did for this one. So this one's powder, target powder, like I said, can be used as a cheek brush, can be used for sculpting, highlighter, uh, if you want area of effect highlight like I just did, it's good for that. But if you want like super precise highlight, obviously it's not going to do it. Same thing with this brush. This can be used for powder, for cheek products, blush, can be used for sculpting. Um, little too, little too not precise of a tip for highlight. So that's this brush. This is the face brush. They have a smaller one. Also, Kalinsky looks exactly the same. It's just smaller. That one's called a cheek brush and that one looks like it can be used for highlight more effectively. I don't own that one. I just went for the biggest one in the series because looking at the dimensions, I thought, nah, that's a cheek brush. And I was right. It's a cheek brush. The other one, the actual cheek brush is a cheek detail brush. And just in case you're wondering, the other brushes in the pro line there are brushes that are more suitable for cheek detail i'm just using this one because it was the most similar in shape and i thought it would give the best comparison in application okay so that's this brush this one can be used for detail highlight it can be used for sweeping powder away if you're going to use this one for sculpting you'll have to make sure you blend really well, or you have another brush that you take and then you kind of use it to blend later. You can use this one to apply and kind of blend out, but then use a bigger, denser brush to soften the effect of it. Um, something that I like to do is take the foundation brush and then because it has foundation on it, it will kind of lift away the powder. And then if you over apply, this is a good way to kind of get rid of product and make it more normal looking again. Okay, this one I've already played with. What else is there? 
And I probably won't get to applying everything because there's only so much makeup a face can take. What is this? Oh, okay, eyeshadows. We've got lots of pretty eyeshadows to work with. Alrighty. So I have mostly um, blue, purple, greens, and luckily these are blue, purple, greens. So let's see. I'm wearing a green scarf. It would probably be too much to do green eyeshadow. Maybe I'll do a tealy blue green to match that. And I do happen to have a matte that works with it, a blue and a green here. So, what's this? This is like Christmas. Okay, um, hmm. I don't have a eye blending brush. I only have four paddle brushes, so we're going to use this to apply the base color. So we're going to use this in this sort of like brownie greeny shade. Pick it up. And I'm sorry, I have no idea what these eyeshadows are at the moment. I'll figure it out later. So I'm going to go here, apply kind of like the base, define the crease. And then did you, did you kind of doing a halo effect because I'm probably going to be putting a lot of eye makeup on, so I'm making a really big base for it. And that's why I'm using a face detail brush. And because we're here, why not? Not the normal contour color I would use, but hey, no one's looking that closely. And it's about to be dark soon, so. I'm blending out the rest of it. Mm, I might put a little bit more on the edges, so I'm going to dip just this side here into more product and then put it onto the outer edges. And if anyone is curious, the reason why I'm doing this is because I have a couple Ogi brushes, and that's how I use Ogi brushes. So I figure Ogi fan brush, same thing. Here we go. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Ogi brushes are a series from Hakuhodo that is a special type of crimped fan brush, and they're pretty much like this. And they have it for all sorts of functions, for the face, for the cheek, for the eyes, for the brows, for liner. The only thing they don't have it for is foundation, which I understand why, but actually I might have to take that back. They might have an Ogi for foundation. Okay, there we go. If I can get the camera to focus. All right. So that's the eye base laid down. Mm -hmm. I think I'll use this green and this bluish green next. I'm going to apply that with this. Yeah, okay. I'm going to apply this with one of the brushes that was sent. This is a Kalinsky paintbrush because we're playing around experimenting with using paint brushes as Kalinsky disappears from eye makeup brushes. We're resorting to artist brushes instead. So I'm going to use this to apply the blue and green color. And this is a pretty big one. This is a 22. The other one is also a 22. Okay, so we're stuck using 22s. And the other one is at 24, so I'm not going to even touch that. Okay. Where did my mirror go? Okay, gonna do that there, wipe it off. And then this is how I kind of clean brushes in between colors. You could put a makeup change 
or make a brush cleanser, one of those fast acting solvent ones if you want to, but I'm expecting the color will slide off nicely. So actually I'm going to go in, I went into this one earlier, I'm going to go into the bright blue because I'm planning to layer bright blue and bright green eyeshadow, the glittery eyeshadows over it. Put this here. Okay, then I'm going to take this here. Okay, I'll take a break to answer the comments in a little bit, or comments chat in a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take this, kind of put on the edge. Just a very rough blend to kind of get an idea of how far it goes out and where I'm going to apply the glitter. Okay. Okay, now the meat of the video. I have four eye brushes here. One is synthetic, one is gray squirrel. They're okay, they're all powder, oh, powder, paddle brushes. They're all paddle brushes. Here's a th synthetic one. Here's a Gray Squirrel, here's a Psycho Ho Go, and here's a Kolinsky. They're all about the same size and uh, density, or they have sort of the same give. I can't pick equivalents perfectly, but the reason why this one has sort of a more square shape is because I kind of did it by feel, and this one kind of has the same feeling when I give it a little push from the side. Obviously, the squirrel one is going to be the most give. The Kolinsky one is relatively thin in comparison, but it has about the same. And then this one kind of needed all of the extra material, plus the shorter shape to give it the same movement or the same firmness. So what I think I'm going to do is a finger swatch and then swatches with the brush and I'm going to be doing it on my inner arm and then picking which effect I like the most and using that on the eyes or I'm going to pick the two that I like the most and then do it on the eyes because I'm going to be doing this color this one here it's kind of got gold reflex okay so that's the finger swatch. And then let's do the synthetic. This is the this is the Sigma E55. And I'm going to be going like this. One, two, and then down this way. Okay, it's gonna need more. Okay, so wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Let's go more and let's go. Oh dear. That would be my light. Okay, there we go. Let's get that light reattached. Okay, so finger, Sigma, Eve. E55, and I can already hear people saying, it would be better if you wet the brush. I know, I know. Okay, this is the Hokoto GS3. Okay, so right now I just wiped it twice in the shadow so far. And we're gonna go here. Okay, so swiping in the pan doesn't do much, so I'm now gonna put it in the pan and kind of wiggle it to kind of get the product in there. There we go. And that's what I did for the Sigma brush as well on the second pass through, just so you know. Here we go. Okay. 
And now we're going to do the Sonia G Worker Pro. Not to be confused with the ones that have the big the big uh, handle butts. There's the Worker One and Worker Two. Those are much thicker brushes. Okay, so we're going to try the two swipe first and then the wiggle. Okay, that might have been three. Okay, there we go. And then now the wiggle pick up. And then the wiggle pickup generally works better. I'm not surprised it does. It's because you're kind of moving bristles aside and as they move aside and come back together, they pick up product. There we go. And we're gonna use the gray squirrel brush. This is a Chikohodo GSN9. There's a mini version of a short handle called the GS4, which is exactly the same brush. And we're gonna go here. Oh, I already wiggled it. Okay, I'm gonna use the other side to do a pickup with two swipes and then I'll use the other side I wiggled on. Okay, break up that clump. Okay, so that's two swipes. And then I'm gonna use the wiggle side with one more wiggle and reapply. So we, here we have it. Mm -hmm. Let's line these all up. We have the strongest one is applied by finger. The second one is applied by a synthetic, the Sigma E55. This one, this one in the middle is applied by Kolinsky Hokodo GS3. And then this fourth one here, I guess second to you is a Sonya G Worker Pro. And then finally we have the gray squirrel. So I bring it over to the light. You can see that the base color, the matrix, that dark blue shows up differently and gets dragged across differently. It's the weakest with the synthetic. And then the base color shows most strongly with the gray squirrel and the goat. So the Kolinsky actually applies a lot less of the base color and a lot more of the shimmer. So if I see here, do this here, you can see it picks it up and brings it all the way the same, but the Kolinsky one looks lighter because it deposited a lot more of the shimmer and a lot less of the dark blue base. And I'm actually a little bit surprised by how comparable the gray squirrel and the goat are. The gray squirrel one is actually ever so slightly darker and more strong, more pigmented of a lay down in real life. On camera, it looks the same though. So because these two are relatively the same, I'm gonna pick the one I like better, the GS4 for one of the applications. And then this one is going to go aside. And then I'm going to use the Kolinsky one on the other side. So this middle swatch, and this one's going to get put aside. Okay, before I do that, what's in the chat? I'm excited to be back and doing this. I have to do a couple test run test videos before I start doing the official information videos again because I want to actually be able to find words and use the right words. Let's see. Thoughts on the limited edition Yoshiki Koyudo that Food and Beauty just announced. Not sure what Giant Squirrel does though. Hmm. Giant Squirrel's a new one. Um is it the one from India, like that giant squirrel where it looks like a rainbow squirrel? Softness. So, da, 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 da. Oh. Hmm. I don't know about giant squirrel. That's a completely new material to me, so I don't know how soft it is. And as for the customs limit, um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that. I've been out of the beauty game for a while. Okay. I'm going to take this, do the wiggle, do the wiggle pick up any fallout, which actually there's a bit of. And I'm gonna go across. Start in the middle. Take it across here. Okay. 
gonna take what's left and then go underneath to wrap. Okay, that's one eye. This is a Hokodo GS3. And then I'm going to take this GSN9, wiggle it to pick up product, and then start in the middle, apply from the peak of the eyeball to the inner lid. A little more. Peak of eyeball to inner lid. I'm gonna take what's left and then wrap. You can tell it's been a long time since I played with makeup because I picked up this compact and I was wondering, wow, they really downgraded the mirrors. This is so terrible. This is such a terrible mirror. And then I realized the protective film is still on it. Okay. All right, there we go. Um, obviously the squirrel one has a lot more diffuse of a line because it's less thin and this one was able to keep much closer of a line because it's relatively thin in profile but comparably the application is quite similar with a little bit more of the shimmer on the kolinsky but otherwise they're pretty close let's see There's a little bit more of the green tone on the squirrel application side. So let's see if I can even it out a little bit by taking a little more extra product on the tip of the Kalinsky and applying this right on the lash line. There we go, that's stronger. And now that both eyes are out of whack, I'm gonna to have to take the squirrel to even this out and give it a little bit more of a fuzzy halo. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take the Kolinsky brush and I'm going to take a dark color and kind of ring around a little bit more. So I'm gonna go into this dark sort of petrol blue color using just the side of the brush to pick up. Wow, these are so soft. It's kind of reminds me of Viseart shadows. I think these are the Cleona eyeshadows. I'm going to use this right on the lash line. There we go. Take a little bit of that petrol blue down here. And then no, even though this is, this is Kolinsky and one of the sort of tougher fibers, it doesn't irritate my eyes when I go right on the waterline like that. So I'm gonna take what's left on a brush, go a little bit up into the outer corner. Put it over here. And then I'm going to take that art brush, the Germany Kolinsky 22, I don't know what brand this is and then blend. I get to the feeling this might have started life as a nail brush, I'm not sure. It, it seems a little bit too pointed to be a nail brush. I think those tend to be a little more round, but I could be wrong. I'm not a watercolor painter or I'm not any sort of painter. So if there's an artist in a in the watchers, please let me know in the comment. Alrighty. And then, hmm, just for fun, I am, well, actually, fun is the whole point of this video. I'm gonna take this Worker Pro brush, kind of clean it off on my towel, or this is just tissue paper. This is just bathroom tissue. Clean it up here a bit, and I'm going to go into that iridescent face palette, find one of the greeny iridescent colors, and then put that on. Okay, so the most greeny one is this one here. 
kind of wiggling it to loosen up product and I'm just patting it to pick up. There we go. Wow, those are those are some intense highlights. And I got this effect with goat. All right, going back into that dark blue stained brush, and because this co synthetic seemed to have the least um, product picked up and deposited, I'm going to take advantage of that property and use a very little amount of product on it to kind of erase and blend that highlight away and make it a little darker. And what I'm doing is kind of putting the brush at an angle and going on the edge. If I do it straight like that, it will kind of put a line down. If I do it on the side, that natural taper to the tip will assist in blending it and making it look a little bit smoother. All right, I think that's enough makeup on the eyes for now. Put all this refuse to the side, read all the boxes later, yada, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff and gloss and mascara. For those of you who joined expecting important information, I am so sorry you did not get that this time. I will get back to it. But for now, I need to figure out how to present again. Being able to talk, pick words, do makeup, pick the right words that is, Pick the right words and do makeup and remember brush names is definitely a perishable skill. I'm sure anybody who does public speaking knows that. Me? I try to avoid public speaking at all costs. Had a presentation the other day, just a little five minute presentation and I kid you not, my heart rate was 20% higher in the minutes leading up to me speaking my part. On the phone, I can talk all day long. But because on the phone it's only auditory, I don't really have to pay attention to the visuals. It kind of reduces the stress load a bit. I can take notes, I can refer to notes. Uh, here it's a little bit different. Like every time I have to look at the brush handle names to remember and prompt me on what the brush name is, it kind of embarrasses me a little bit because I should know. But honestly, with the brushes I have, I just use them most of the time and I don't pay attention to what the names are unless they are my absolute, absolute favorites. And then I know the names off the top of my head. Like the Hokoda GS3. That name is not printed on the handle, but I could tell you it right away. Unfortunately, they no longer make that brush. So it's been fun trying to find a replacement for it. The GS3 was my pick to replace the Shu Urmura 10, the original Kalinsky version of Shu Urmura 10. Now both of them are discontinued, so the hunt begins all over again. I also didn't realize until halfway through the video, video that my microphone was placed in the wrong place, so I kind of just left it there rather than move it and change the audio quality halfway through. So, a lot of little things in that go into filming that take practice and has to be gotten right. And I don't want to film an official information video and have it turn out bad. Alrighty, I think I'll put a gloss on and then call it a day. Time to go make dinner. Pretty nice that the gloss goes with the blush color. 
a little contrasty. The peachy orange is a little contrasty with the blue and green eyes, but it's okay. I'm not going outside. And if I do go outside, it's dark. I have discovered that my lip line is a little bit different, like a little higher and a little less full. So fun things you discover. Okay. How do you get the shimmer out of squirrel eye brushes between uses considering that it's not recommended to wash them often. So you can do what I do and take a tissue. This is just plain bath tissue, toilet paper, depending on where you're from. Spray it with a little bit of a makeup solvent. Um, they sell specialty makeup wipes and makeup liquids that you can use and then they evaporate quickly. So you can use that to clean the brush, or you can just take a straight microfiber cloth, leave it dry, and then brush your brush on it the same way that you use to pick up or apply makeup, because those same motions that get the pigment lodged into the brush will get the pigments out of the brush. Um, if you don't like the idea of solvents, the Cinema Secrets one is pretty safe. I have a couple of friends, they're also really big into makeup brushes, and they've been using them for years on their most precious brushes, and they haven't seen damage to them. So the Cinema Secrets one is one I can recommend for sure that is safe for brushes and clean brushes between shampoo, like the full shampoo wash and dry. So that's a good one. Um, something that we're experimenting with, we being the crazy makeup brush people, are sort of products for pets, things that you use for pets to shampoo or to kind of keep them fresh in between shampoos. A uh, couple things to test out here. We'll let you know how those turn out. But other than that, the other method I'd recommend is the dry cleaning method, which I have a video on from who knows how long ago, where you take sort of pure silica or pure talc powder, like the RCMA no color powder, that's just pure talc and silica. In which order, I don't know. But it's the no color powder, you kind of dip your brush into it and then that excess powder will kind of dissolve the makeup pigment. And then you take your microfiber cloth and then you wipe it around and remove stuff. And then you take the brush and you kind of Flick it a couple times and you see if powder still coming out of it. If there's powder still coming out of it, you find another section of cloth that's clean and then you just keep wiping until it's all removed. That should remove the majority of pigment, both cream pigment, liquid pigment, and powder pigment from your brushes. And that's how you take care of gray squirrel brushes. So, any other questions? The towel takes care of the pigment, but you feel like the sparkles take forever. I mean, um, that's the, yeah, sorry. That's the other part of the question to answer. The sparkles just take a long time. If you can find a high pile microfiber cloth, that does help. If you use the regular little like tiny fuzzy ones, like the ones you get with eyeglasses, that's also microfiber. That's going to take longer to remove because the, high pile microfiber cloth kind of act like fingers that go into the hair bristles and kind of help grab and remove stuff. So just play around with different microfiber cloths and see which one works best. Um, try the Cinema Secrets solvent. That one's more to remove pigment. It probably won't work as well with sparkles, but otherwise the dry cleaning method with the RCMA no color powder or cornstarch has some other people have recommended it's probably the best way because that extra powder will go in there and kind of space out the bristles a bit. And then once the bristles are spaced out, then the glitter, because it's the large particle, has more room to drop out of the brush. So the large sparkle pieces will drop out first, then the smaller bits, the no color powder, will drop out later as you're cleaning it. So hopefully that helps. That's all theoretical. I've never actually done it. So report back to me on how that goes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.